Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. It's always fun right when we start an event and we get to see our attendee uh, number go up. So welcome everyone to our uh, second and final day of our virtual impact tour. Um, we'll go ahead and go to the next slide just to go over interpretation um, from folks who joined yesterday or other events, you're well familiar, just to make sure everyone has a chance to listen in their preferred language. Please go to the bottom of your screen and select one of the channels on uh, the globe icon. So you can either listen in English or Spanish today. Um, so I'll go ahead and pause and my colleague Ben will give those uh, instructions in Spanish. Hola a todos, buenos días. Uh, hoy tenemos la opción de tener interpretación en viva. Entonces, si puede ir al, um, al botón, al, al fondo de su pantalla, hay un botón de, de globo terráqueo y, y se puede hacer clic en su canal preferida de, de interpretación inglés o en español. Um, y también se puede escoger de silenciar el audio original o no. Uh, gracias por estar aquí hoy y se puede uh, enviarme un mensaje en el chat si tiene un problema. Gracias. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, as you might have seen, those instructions are also in the chat. Um, if you need them, feel free to reach out to Ben um, and Jasmine who are helping us today. So welcome everyone. Again, as I mentioned, I'm excited to have you all here for our second and final day of our virtual impact tour to Nicaragua. Um, and I'm excited to welcome our speakers today. To start, my name is Julia Correa. Um, I'll be the host, although not doing much talking, um, since we'll be hearing from our Water for People colleagues and partners in Nicaragua. So to start, we'll have Lisa Rivera, our country director in Nicaragua, share and go over our agenda for today and to help introduce um, some of the topics and programmatic areas uh, we'll be sharing during our tour. Then we also have Kenneth Scorcia, communications and fundraising officer, also based in Nicaragua. He has been our host reporter extraordinaire over these last couple of days, um, and we'll be leading on the interviews with our partners. We are lucky to have their support um, from all of the colleagues in Nicaragua, as well as some global colleagues helping here on the call today. So if you need any help or support, use that chat. And I've loved already seeing folks taking the opportunity to introduce themselves. So feel free to use the chat, share who you are, uh, where you're calling from, and thank you for joining. Before I pass it off to Lisa, did want to take the opportunity to highlight the virtual impact tour match uh, that we have across this tour. We have a generous partner, Brentag, sponsoring and matching all donations up to $25,000 over this tour. As you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, there are these very handy QR codes um, that will lead you to a donation page. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank Brentag, but to also thank you all. We've had a lot of generous contributions so far to the match. Many of you who have expressed um, how you feel more connected to Water for People's work and specifically the impact of people in Nicaragua. So thank you. Uh, thank you for helping us continue this impact and hopefully reach our match goal. So with that, uh, I'll pass it off to Lisa uh, just to give a brief introduction of the visits that will go on today, as well as give you a little tour. So Lisa, over to you. Buenos días a todos y todas. Mi nombre es Lisa Rivera y soy la directora de Water for People en Nicaragua. My name is Lisa Rivera and I am the country director in Nicaragua. I am in the city of Jinopea where we have our offices to work to our to, for uh, in our two municipalities to work on everyone forever. We're going to talk about sanitation, how do families do to access 
safer solutions for sanitation. Sanitation is one of the most compli complex uh, topics to or issues to solve in this sector. And Water for People is working on innovative market solutions. And we're working with partners like mayors, municipalities, and microfinance to provide safe sanitation. On the other hand, today we are going to want to look at the importance of our work in the national, uh, national level in our 2030 strategy, Water for People has wants to further impact to strengthen the water and sanitation systems at national level. One of our work lines in Nicaragua has to do with the water and sanitation network in Nicaragua. And today we are going to learn about the initiatives and we have invited some of our partners to share with us. So welcome and thanks a lot for being here with us. Now back to you, Julia. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I feel like we're broadcasting on the news, as uh, one of our colleagues said. Um, but thank you for that introduction. We have a jam-packed day today. Um, so thank you all for bearing with us and joining us again. Um, we are going to start off with that sanitation visit that Lisa mentioned. It will be a pre-recorded visit due to the rural nature of the communities where we work in Nicaragua also wanted to say that we are trying something new, hoping to have interpretation into English available as captions for you to read, also uh, for you to listen, thanks to our interpreter, Carla. So it's something new for us, bear with us. If you are interested in listening in Spanish or a fluent speaker, you can feel free to uh, switch back to the main channel. So leave your English channel if you'd like to listen to the original audio. It's our hope this will make it a more inclusive uh, for listeners around the globe. Um, and the final reminder, feel free to use the Q&A feature throughout the, vi the video. That way you can add in questions that then we'll address during our live Q&A session. So thank you everyone, and we'll go ahead and start with our first visit. We are in, in the PO12 neighborhood in San Rafael del Norte, and I am here with Elliot Celedon. She was one of the beneficiaries and she has made an improvement in her sanitary unit. I want to ask you, how was the sanitary unit that you had before in your house? Hello. Previously, we rented we rented a house and about three years ago, we had our own, we moved to our own home, but this house had no, didn't, didn't bring a, a restroom, it had a latrine. My boy, my little boy was 12, two years old back then, and it was not safe for him to to go to the latrine because the latrine is not safe for a young child. But uh, he used to go to the to the restroom all by himself in, uh, in in our previous house. But and he already told me when he went to go to the bathroom. But when he but when we moved to this new house, he had a kind of a withdrawal. He could he uh, or he couldn't because he was afraid of going to the bathroom, and that was the situation that we were living. So what were the problems and insecurities apart from your uh, your young child the, uh, and the facts that you had a lettering, lettering in your house? Well, the hygienic part, because we could not use the patio because uh, it smelled, it, it had a bad smell. And also when it was raining, it was uncomfortable. It could We could have floods or overflows. And if you wanted to go to the restroom of the lettering in the middle of the night, it was a little bit scary. So those were the, some of the difficulties we had. We know that the San Rafael del Norte mayor's office in alliance with Water for People carried out a municipal incentive for sanitation. In this case, you were benefited with this incentive. Please tell us what was this incentive about and how did it improve your, uh, your sanitary or your sanitation unit? We give uh, an input and it, a contribution, but it's a small one compared to the value of the tank and the rest 
is um, paid by water for people in agreement in in conjunction with the mayor's office and we have the advice tech, the technical advice thank you we get the technical advice to place the tank in a in all the other or the, or the restroom in a suitable place where it doesn't make us feel uncomfortable at all in this case what have been the changes that you had that you could see in your child and in your family your mom in all the people living in your household since you have uh, the sanitation unit or the the restroom the first thing is that it is hygienic it is very affordable because we didn't have the money to 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 afford it so now it's affordable and then it's very hygienic you can we can keep it clean clean it's very close to the house if i if you feel ill i can just go there with no problem and my my, my little boy can just go to the restroom in, in, and feel completely safe and and we have a lot of space left in my patio i i, I know that you uh, that you said it before that earlier that you had a latrine and one of your fears is that when you constructed or built this sanitation unit or this restroom, you could not build a, a concrete fence. Um, but how do you solve this with the Water for People team? Yes, I was afraid that I could not do it because I didn't have, I couldn't afford it uh, because I thought that it was, a, that concrete con con construction was a, was mandatory so i talked to the engineer mr carlos he was very kind and accessible and i asked him is it mandatory that i must build a little house a concrete house for the restaurant and i asked if i could use the my old latrine a booth and uh, or house and 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 the engineer said no problem and i was so happy and yes i was very eager to start the project because there was he, the team was always uh looking for us so that every family could not could, could be benefited i know that here in the neighborhood there are many families around do you consider that this is an accessible measure for other families yes i have recommended it i had a friend who came for a visit here and her and she has moved here and her house has no uh restroom so i told her about the project and the amount of money that you have to contribute and she got all the information i think that she has already got in touch with um the project because she's not talking about it anymore but all the people that i've shared the project with they're all very happy because it's affordable it's hygienic and it has a lot of benefits it is very important this what you mentioned that you share with all people every time you can about the improvements you will be able to make in your house i want to ask you now why do you consider it is important to have a safe uh, to uh, toilet in your home because of for health as it is hygienic it doesn't threaten the health of the people uh, as they use this restroom we are low income families so we can easily access this project and have a good as project also it is good it's safe for the children because it is safe for children to go to a restroom and it's easier for them to learn and they are also very they they, they are eager to learn so because they flush the toilet they want to learn and yes it has a lot of benefits thank you very much Elliot. before we conclude would you like to share a message to the, all the people who are watching us now about sani about safe sanitation what message would you share with the people that do not have a safe uh, sanitation unit or restroom i so i felt i think sometimes we are limited by embarrassment and fear let's go to the people that work with this type of project we are going to get our answer we need to take in care take care of our health it's better to be safe than sorry so we need to take care of our health this is very hygienic very affordable we get professional advice so the work is carried out in excellent conditions i think that's all for now thank you Elliot, and thank you all for being connected we carry on with this tour
Thank you, Kenneth, for that great visit and highlighting uh, the importance of our sanitation work. I uh, love the comment that she made about really sharing this news socially with you know, communities, neighbors, and getting more people excited about how accessible this opportunity is. So now we'll pass it to Kenneth for our live Q&A. Please use that Q&A feature um, on the bottom of your screen. and We'll make sure those questions get answered live. Over to you, Kenneth. Gracias, Julia, y gracias a todas las personas que están Thank you, Julia, and to all the people who are connected now. We are here at the Office of Water for People in Jinotega, over 100 kilometers from the capital city of Nicaragua, Managua. And here I'm with, with Eliette, and as we can see in the video, she was one of the beneficiaries of the incentive that was given in San Rafael del Norte on, 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 on the on the toilet. And I would like to ask you before the people who are connected here uh, bring their questions on the chat for you. I would like to ask you, in the video you told us that the uh, sharing, you know, spreading the word with your friends and your neighbors was very, um, had a great impact. What other ways do you think were also made an impact or, prom or encouraged your neighbors to get this sanitation incentive? Well, I think that now social media play a very important role because people, we are all, almost everybody is on the social media. So it's a way to reach the population and let them go and let them know about the projects and the support or uh, provided by the organization to the population. And you also said about changes about the benefits with your little boy. And we also know that your mom lives in your house and she is an elderly lady. She's 61 years old. So what has, how, how, how has this change implied? What implications have brought these changes for her? This was a great change for everybody, a material change because now it, we can, we can, it's affordable. We are also a low income family and we have been growing little by little. And my dream has always to make progress, uh, making little steps. But first we had a, a house. Oh, now I have to wait five years to have a, a toilet. But no, thanks to the project, this was a this was made a reality. So this means a lot to me because I'm making progress. I'm making uh, I'm meeting goals. My my little boy feels safe and he can go to the toilet safely, not feeling fear. Our neighbors feel comfortable because they don't live in a place where there with where, where, where there are bad smells. And my mother also, as you already said, she's an elderly lady, and we know that these people find it a little bit harder to move, but she she can move around well, but when she's ill, and a, a toilet can be a great help for her. And now that the toilet is very close to our home and it's very important and useful for us. How do you consider how many of your neighbors have already access to a suitable restroom? You said that this helped a lot to the to health and safety. But how have you seen this in your surroundings to your neighbors that have accessed this improvement to their sanitation? Or, or, or are there some who still have the latrines? Yes, some months ago, a neighbor of mine has just installed the same biodigester. And I think that there are like three people near to my house for using it. And I would like to highlight this. And that is the work carried out by the people that visit us and who are from the organization. They are so accessible because people sometimes feel embarrassed to go and ask because they think that these people are beyond reach or that they are not going to receive a nice answer. But the people from the organization are nice. They are always willing to reply to us and they can answer on the phone. Even if we meet them in the street, they are going to give us all necessary information and they help us to uh, and, and tell us how we can access the project. So I think that is one of the things that 
That's why more people are, are joining in because of the facility, because it's so easy. And it, not, not only from a financial point of view, but also from the people from the organization to all the people who are watching right now in Nicaragua, according to the joint monitoring program in 2020, the most recent sanitation coverage statistics say that 60% of the rural population have access to basic sanitation, at least 40% still do not have suitable sanitation. So that's why Water for People's work it focuses on sanitation at a nation at a national level and as many people Elliot was ben benefited and i want you Elliot to share with all the people that we couldn't see in the video you, you you said in the video that how was this idea come for you to have a restroom in your home because you had a latrine outside your home before well when we we rented a home we we had a, a, a toilet there but then we moved to the new house uh, and you so you and this one had a latrine so you used to rent and now and now you have a house of your own so this is my own home but it had a, lat, a, lat, a latrine and my son used to, in my, the rented house my son was two years old and he was already able to go to the toilet by himself and he and he let us know when he needed to go to the bathroom but when we moved to the new house with the latrine, he started going backwards and because he started to fear, to feeling afraid of going to the latrine. So, and he, and I, but when everybody just asked my little boy, how are you doing? And he said, yes, I'm, I'm fine, but we have no, we have no toilet. So the, my, my, my mother uh, told me that there was a, a project uh, from water for people so that we could have a toilet in, in, in our home. So I, I'm always want to be, I'm always very responsible in my, in my job. And I didn't, and I, and I couldn't, and I couldn't have find time to go and pay a visit to the project. So someone gave me the phone number. So I called them. And as I said in the video, said, I, I was just feeling that I was not going to be able to afford it because I did not have the money to build the, uh, concrete house, uh, the, the concrete uh, booth, but I, so I wondered, can I use the old booth that I used to have with the latrine? And I asked the engineer and the engineer said, yes, you can use it. So we got organized and the project was carried out and became a reality. Oh, what a nice experience that you are saying that your son is now so happy to have a restroom and a toilet. And you said that he can access a safe space at such a young age. What message would you, because now we are connected with so many people who are donors to Water for People. What message would you give them as the beneficiary of a Water for People project to uh, encourage them to keep on donating? Well, first of all, thanks, thanks a lot, because this means for us a lot for us as a family, as a neighborhood. This is a great change for people like me that we are re just starting to make progress and to see that we can get a better home little by little. It means a lot for us more than, and, and we give to our homes a, a much, and we give our project a, a much greater value than what it actually costs. And, I know that other people that have support, asked for support for this project, and I know that they're all as happy as we are in my family. So we thank you so much for this project, for this, for your support. That means a lot to us. And it means a great change for the environment because we have a more, a safer, a healthier, and a cleaner life, not only in our neighborhood. And I would like to ask you, now that we are coming to the end of this interview and exchange, we thank all the people who are asking the questions. And these questions, we will leave the answers. Uh, we put the answers in the chat as well. I, will, I wanted to ask you as well, and I'm sure that the engineers told you about the cleaning system, because we know that it's an easy system, easy to install, but it's also easy to, to clean. 
So when did you got your restroom installed? About uh, 18 months. So you are not you're not in charge of the cleaning yet. But you did, but you were told that it was easy to do it. Yes, it, it we have a cleaning kit that is already prepared and we get it from the installation and we also have another box and the engineers will give us training as to how we can clean our restrooms and if we need a person and find so or pay with anybody in their house can do it as long as we have the knowledge and we're trained to do it but we can even pay somebody if we need to yes thank you very much because i know that you've been working at your job and you gave us this half hour to be with us so i'm so thankful in, in the name of wonderful people and all the people who are connected thank you for being connected here with us and yes i thank you so much and i'm so happy to be have this chance to thank you and i'm not only to the donors but also to the encouragers of this project and the municipality of hypnoteca and also i wanted to thank you personally because it meant so much for me so thank you and i'm so happy to share with you thank you Eliette, and thank you for all the people who are still connected and now we're giving the floor to julia and we are carry on with our impact tour thank you kenneth and Eliot. um such a great aspect of our programming to highlight both in terms of that generational impact that she highlighted both for her son and her mother um, as well as the ripple effect within communities, encouraging others to improve their sanitation and really ex experiencing how accessible that is for, for those in the community. So I know we didn't get to all of those questions, but we will be continuing on learning a little bit more about our sanitation programming, Water for People. So one of the things that was highlighted in that last interview was um, the partnerships Water for People has um, with an incentive program, making it more accessible um, to access capital and loans um, for building a household toilet. It was teased a little bit, but we have a lot of other details to share. Um, and so now I am excited to introduce two speakers that we have from Micredito, which is a microfinance partner in Nicaragua. We have Moises Valle and Juan Carlos Lopez, um, who are going to help us better understand what this incentive program is, how Micredito works, and how families like Elliot's can get involved. So we'll pass it back over to you, Kenneth, who will help moderate that discussion. And I'll just jump in here, uh, not to steal the thunder from our speakers, but allowing them just the chance to make some transitions. Uh, all of this, for the most part, is happening live, which is a really exciting um, and special opportunity that we have with virtual impact tours, um, but something that requires some <laughs> transition on foot. So we just appreciate Kenneth uh, working with us and getting this set up so we can have the most uh, accessible and engaging experience. So I encourage you all to embrace the silence uh, and we'll hear from Moises and, and Juan Carlos and Kenneth when they're ready. Thank you, Julia, and to all the people who are still connected with us. I am here uh, sharing with Juan Carlos and Moises Valle to uh, share with you. Uh, Moises is the Deputy General Manager in the Micredito Microfinance Institution uh, for the last five years, and he is a finance expert. He is a manager and an accountant with experience in several corporations in Nicaragua, and he's also 
uh, has a lot of experience in banks and auditor. And we also have Juan Carlos Lopez, and he's a head of communications in Migreto for the last five years. He is a social communicator. He is a digital journalist with eight year experience as a producer, as an audiovisual producer and photographer. Good morning, Moises and Juan Carlos. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, Kenneth. Good morning to all. My name is Moises Valle and I am a, a, a deputy manager of Micredito. Good morning, I'm Juan Carlos Lopez, and I am so happy to be with you this morning and share with you how we share, how we change lives from Micredito. Thanks a lot to you both. I wanted to begin by asking you, Moises, what is Micredito? Okay. Micredito is an institu a microfinancial institution specialized in providing financial services to the rural sectors and urban sectors as well with a high social content and it's a, it's addressed to or to these economically active sectors with who have little access or no access at all to credit through the formal financial sector and a raison d'etre lies in our mission, and that is to create business solutions to involve small and little and uh, middle in, in, in entrepreneurs with uh, by creating their small and medium businesses. We not, not only provide loans, we provide solutions to improve the lives of our clients through solutions with this social content like for example the content of water and sanitation and we and that's where here and we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about that and as of mi credit we're also part of the other of many institutions that are part of the ministry of education and we are we are also uh, supervised by the superintendency of microfinance institutions and we support economic and social and development of the micro and small entrepreneurs in Central America. In this sense, we have a presence not only in Nicaragua, but also in Costa Rica. And we will also be present in Honduras. We have a, a network of 15 a branch offices. And in May, in June, we are going to open new two new branch offices and our portfolio is around 17 million dollars and we serve over 9600 families don moises you talked about the micretos intentions to grow so here i would like to ask about and also based on your experience what is the difference between an institution like Micredito, who is a microfinancial institution, and a bank, and a banking institution? Because people are used to go to banks, and banks are wider known. Yes, the banks are usually serve a segment of the population that have a higher profile, and they normally uh, do not serve or uh, vulnerable families who are traditionally the poor population of the country and they have little access or limited access to credit. Institutions like Micredito focus on serving the basis of the pyramid and we serve the population, the clients the micro and small entrepreneurs who are active and they are a vulnerable population that have very little funding to uh, as to carry out an investment in the business for example water and sanitation our clients are economically active they have a low level of income they cannot invest with their money on one single activity. So they need financing 
or funding to carry out what they want to do. So, but the banks make have a number of requirements that our population cannot reach. So as a, we provide, we at Micredito provide a solution, a business solution, not only financial solution, but also we want to uh, reach a high social impact. So we open our doors to these small and micro entrepreneurs so that they can develop their business projects and are able to reach an improvement in their life, in the quality of living. I wanted to ask you, Juan Carlos, about the work that we have carried out together between Micredito and Water for People. Could we talk a little bit about the relationship that we have from, from, the, micro, from the Micredito perspective? How did it begin? What was the importance for you to get into this alliance? And how does this alliance and this relationship that we have has improved over time? Well, since 2016, we started with the water and sanitation project with a pilot project that started in two departments of the country, Masaya and Estelit. And then when we saw that this project was of great importance for the well-being and health of these families, we decided to expand to uh, to the to uh, all our uh, to all our other branches. And now you can see this product in all our branches, nation level. We have a coverage of over on all eleven departments. So when we saw this need that we needed advice with experts that knew about this topic. In 2017, we started having this alliance between Micredito and Water for People. But what motivates us more is that Water for People and Micredito meet a goal and that we share, and that is to change the quality of living of the people. That is our raison d'etre, and that is why, as, an, as a financial institution, we create solutions that bring social impact like for example the water and sanitation product we have evolved along this period in nicaragua we had we incurred a political crisis and the pandemic however this relationship has strengthened and we have become stronger in through several actions the first one was through permanent training or ongoing training not only to our staff and our loan advisors who go house to house to visit our clients, but also to our clients who are always willing to get trained, to uh, visit, to give advice. So those are the actions that we carry out together. Another ongoing action that we had the opportunity to carry out is that Water for People has become a bridge to get to meet other institutions that work on water directly. For example, in 2020, we had an, we said we had an alliance with Plastic Fan that sells tanks, biodigesters. So Water for People brings us together with all these other organizations so that we can start an alliance and carrying out and carry out uh, causing impact and bring the product and that it develops and our clients are benefited. Another action that we have developed jointly are the communication strategies that we have developed to promote this product. Water for People in the last few years has been closely involved with Mi Credito to promote this product because in Nicaragua, we know that the basis of the pyramid has very little access to potable drinking water systems. So we have designed this product to serve four needs, to meet four needs. The one, access to potable drinking water. Two, a dignified toilet uh, with, with the construction of a toilet. The three, the, the purchase of biodigesters. And four, the purchase of water storage tanks. So in that way, Water for People and Micredito have worked on a strategy looking to visit to make this product visible and reaches more families in Nicaragua. Thank you, Juan, 
uh, Juan Carlos, and I wanted to uh, invite all those people who are connected with us so that they can leave their questions in the Q&A section. We will be very happy to uh, reach your questions to our guests, Juan Carlos and Moises. Now, the question that I'm going to ask now, I am asking this question to both of you, and I would like Moises to answer first and then Juan Carlos, and that is what is the relationship that we have in this case between the microfinances, between institutions like Micro, Microdito, your institution, and water and sanitation. The relationship lies in, in the access as we just said, that in moves us or uh, leads us to find solutions for the families who are in great need. So this is aligned with to our mission. That is the relationship that we have with the project, with the water and sanitation project, where we look for ways to bring a solution to these resources that the families need to improve the quality of their living. And this will also have a positive impact on their health. We know that the needs for resources are many, as you already said, 40% of the population, mainly rural population that has no access to uh, these uh, conditions that would lead to improve their sanitation conditions. So here's where we come in to provide and provide the solution so that they can make that investment that they cannot do it by themselves and through the funding and according and, and based on their payment capacity and an interest rate with a preference rate, they can carry out this investment and improve their the quality of their living and the quality of their homes. Juan Carlos? Yes. Well, microfinances, uh, the microfinances raison d'etre is to serve the population at the basis of the pyramid. And those are the uh, farmers, uh, small business people who have no access to the banks. So water and, sanit and sanitation uh, is something that these people lack. You know? So they have a, there is a close relationship in this because microfinances and water and sanitation look for something important. And that is what we shared at the beginning. And that is to improve the, the quality of living of these people. And we do this through a loan. And this loan will impact the families by providing them an access to water or to improving or building their sanitation, their toilets. Many farmers, as we already said, like the, like the story of the that we mentioned before, they do, have, do not have a a big salary. So those people are the ones that we serve because we know, as Moises already said, we can give them a suitable uh, loan so that and and in suitable uh, a lot uh, allotment so that they can develop their projects. And then my quest my next question is that when we talk about sanitation, we talk specifically about inclusion. And there I would like to close. Oh, wh whoever any of you who would like to answer this question, how does Mikrito work to ensure that their loans in sanitation are inclusive and accessible and affordable for the community, in this case, for the people living in the rural communities? Yes, we have a process, a strategy that we carry out to guarantee the access to these sectors mainly in the rural areas. We have staff, we've got credit advisors that pay visits to these people in these areas and through the a, a physical relationship and getting together, getting close to them and, and making them aware of their need, we can offer them a solution to that issue. And our advisors are trained thanks to the alliance with you, to, uh, they, we have been guaranteed and training so that our advisors can also be promoters of this product. 
And in this way, the, it is ensured that the information the client gets is a suitable information. They are provided with uh, publicity and uh, brochures. So there is a great commitment from Water for People to support us in this type of um, work. And they're always open to serve any consultation from the advisor or from the client when the client's need uh, goes beyond the advisor's knowledge, there is a flowing communication, immediate flowing communication with the people in Water for People, and they provide the assistance, the advice that is necessary. Even when we are, we are carrying out campaigns, because we carry out campaigns in the rural sectors with fairs, and we also give support and coaching with Water for People staff when we come to the field to carry out inspections. And this contributes for us to have and reach the objectives and the goals and reach the scopes and keep a, an, a close um, and be closely in touch with the needs so that we can identify them quickly. When we identify a need and the client decides to um, make a request, and we uh, finish an, an, a funding. We have a process on financial education that we share with the client because we are also interested that the clients are provided with sufficient information so that they can become aware of the importance to guarantee that they do their payments in a timely manner so that they can keep their records of good uh, credit owners and whatever, and so that they can have further credits when they need them. And we also do this through publicity campaigns, campaigns on the social media, and we can provide lots of information about this so that we can promote the product through the social media, but also our ad advisors also have provide all they have all the information they have in their cell phones so that they can share them with the clients and another very important thing here is that all our processes are automated from the very beginning to the disbursement of the credit so this contributes a lot for the funding or for the solution that we provide to the client is very can be provided very quickly. Also, alliances become a very important factor in this process. And alliance with the provider is something that uh, is also coordinated. Uh, and that is thanks to Water for People. Thanks a lot to Don Moises Valle, who is um, the deputy manager for Micredito, up to Juan Carlos Lopez, who is the communication specialist in Micredito. Thank you very much. And we are always willing and, and to carry on with this relationship with, between both organizations. Now I give back the floor back to Julia, who has more for us. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Kenneth, Moises, and Juan Carlos. Before our last interview, I'm just going to take a brief pause now to switch our interpreters. Interpreters. Okay. Great. So for our final interview of this virtual impact tour, we'll be meeting Rosa Science and Idalia Lau, two representatives from the Nicaragua Water and Sanitation Network, commonly abbreviated as RASNIC in Spanish. So you might see that coming up here on some slides. We'll be passing it back to Kenneth to introduce our speakers, um, but also did want to just highlight that following this last visit, we're really excited to host uh, our special reflection activity with viewers who are on um, something that has become a staple, if you will, of virtual impact tours. So just wanting to highlight that those um, are our last two parts of our impact tour. We hope you'll join along for.
Back to you, Kenneth. Gracias, Julia, y gracias a todas las personas que continúan con nosotros. Ha llegado... Thank you, Julia, and thank you, everybody who's still with us. We now are going to get to know uh, the work that we do in Water for People and what we do with Rasnik. First, I would like to introduce our guests. We have Rosa Sáenz. She, she is uh, from Ondawa, engineering for um, sanitation in uh, Nicaragua. And she has over 30 years of experience working in social development, around 12 years in water sanitation hygiene, and specializing uh, the approach as water as a human right. We also have Idalia Lau Blanco. She is a project coordinator, training a network at International NGO Borda from Nicaragua. She has over six years of experience working in the water sanitation and hygiene sector and over 15 years in projects that are related to environment and climate change. She is an architect and she has a master's degree on land planning. She's also worked in um, municipal management, public policy, as well as climate change. Ondawa and Borda are two NGOs working in water and sanitation and hygiene in Nicaragua, and they are part of the uh, steering committee of RASNIC, the Water and Sanitation Network of Nicaragua. So after introducing them, I would like to welcome you both. Welcome Rosa, welcome Idalia. Thank you for being here with us today. Good morning. Thank you very much for inviting us. Eh, Idalia, creo que estamos teniendo un poco de problema con, con su audio. Eh, Idalia, I think we are having some issues with your audio. We're not uh, uh, listening to you. We're not hearing. Anyway, maybe it's the headphones. So I would like to ask you, and I will maybe give the floor first to Rosa while Idalia fixes her audio settings. What it, how important it is for NGOs like Ondawa, like Borda and Water for People, how important it is to be part of RASNIC, the Water Sanitation Network of Nicaragua. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you. I think this has been so interesting to really uh, understand all of the you know players and all the stakeholders who are working for the well-being of Nicaraguan families. Most of the organizations that make up RASNIC, we have been doing this for many years now, and it's been really a, a space for uh, important dialogue because working in you know water and sanitation it implies a lot of work, and uh, definitely we won't be able to solve these issues individually. Each organization cannot work alone. So I think Rasnik, this network, provides a space that really. Uh, has the public and the private sector working together, having this dialogue. And we also have a representation from the community. As you know, in Nicaragua, the you know man, the, the areas that we work in, uh, all the organizations that are part of Rasting mostly work in the rural area. And water management in the rural areas, it's usually the responsibility of the water committees that are made up by community members. So definitely the having the communities as part of Rasnik is also key. And this is a space, like I said, that allows us to share knowledge in order to face all of these challenges and also contributing to building policy that uh, we can promote uh, because definitely we have the opportunity to interact with the uh, government institutions that are related to this sector and also promoting all of this richness of work that we have and learning that we each organization has and i think this is what allows us to move forward to work stronger and better and to also make all of the uh, resources more efficient and um, a, more, a more efficient use of these resources and to maybe carry out even research studies training and we do this jointly we don't do this individually and to also uh, 
Even during the pandemic, we've been able to carry out joint operations to face the challenges that we uh, that we have to face and we have to work for, especially working in, in rural areas of Nicaragua. Thank you, Idalia. And now, Idalia, I would like to ask the same question to you. How important it is for organizations like ours to w be part of RASNIC? I think we still are having some audio issues uh, with Idalia. You're muted. No. No. I think we can continue, move on and talk about some of the initiatives. I am uh, Lisa Rivera. I am the country director of Water for People and uh, Idalia is going to share some of the initiatives. The three organizations that are represented here are part of RASNIC and definitely it is important to mention that we do have initiatives like the ones that Rosa mentioned. We have conducted a nationwide study of, of all water and sanitation committees and what are the main challenges they face and how can we tackle some of these challenges, uh, not only in specific or given districts, but how can we actually scale this up and work together? Something else that we've been working on as a network is uh, that a campaign that uh, we did with the uh, support of UNICEF and the IDB. It was an initiative aimed at adults and children for the prevention of COVID-19. So definitely this is these are just a couple of examples that I can share with you about joint initiatives and operations. And right now we're working on a strategic planning and maybe we can now move to Rosa. And maybe Rosa can share with us about what the future holds for us in RASNIC. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. So I wanted to ask Rosa, what are the priorities that you have for, or that RASNIC has to meet the Sustainable Development Goal number six? Well, as Lisa said, definitely we are right now building this strategic plan for the next five years. We're building this five-year plan and we are already envisioning some challenges for the future. And the first thing uh, that we have, the what we have here, the uh, CAPs are the water sanitation committees that are the ones that manage uh, the water services. And uh, we need to keep on contributing this uh, community committees so that they can ensure water services in the rural areas. And then, uh, as members of RASNIC, we're also part of the Interinstitutional Committee for Water and Sanitation. And so we're working on a plan, uh, training, capacity building w for the members of RASNIC to get better. And so also so that we can all implement the strategic plan and we can work as a, as a network. Something else we're doing is we are working on everything that has to do with sustainability of water services, mostly from the uh, water resource management standpoint. And definitely right now we have resources specifically earmarked for this. We want to have capacity building of the members of RASNIC so that we can do integrated water management, water resource management. We need to take into account climate change, the effects of climate change on water services and specifically rural water services. Another important challenge is to keep on making progress for sanitation rural sanitation uh, based on some studies that 
have been performed in terms of the progress made towards the um, SDG 6. We are making progress a little bit faster in water than in sanitation. Sanitation is getting a little bit lagged behind, and so definitely we need to work harder for sanitation. And as RASNIC, we are also going to uh, develop an initiative that we conducted last year uh, for a training course on sanitation. But we also want to identify new strategies to uh, make progress in sanitation. And so we are talking about innovation, we're talking about strategy and how to provide technical assistance and funding. Something else that is also of utmost importance for us is the uh, information flow and how this information is used. And so as a network, we've been working, we've been contributing with data uh, in the different areas where we work in order to measure the progress towards the SDG 6. But we're also participating in different spaces where we are actually having reflection about information flows. This is very important for planning. We need to have information to plan for water and sanitation, and that is very important. Also, there is a very strong capacity building component here. Uh, we want to build the capacities of the technicians, uh, not only of the water uh, committees and water offices, but also of RASNIC itself, of the network. We've been uh, struggling for many years, uh, but definitely we, we have been doing the work and we believe that RASNIC is necessary to look for solutions for the different challenges that this sector implies. And then another topic, uh, which is also very important, is how to incorporate gender, ap the gender approach uh, into our work. Definitely recognizing women and incorporating and integrating women in every single step of water management and you know hygiene management and sanitation management. That is for uh, sure an important uh, component. And so this is all the information that we have with the, that we're working with the inter-institutional committee with the government and that is part of our agenda. And this is, I think, a really good space that allows us to contribute to the uh, policy building that uh, and policy making that will have an influence and, and will advocate for water sanitation in the country. Most of the members are mostly focused on the rural areas, but we also contribute to peri urban and urban areas because definitely the inter institutional uh, commission that we work with it encompasses both areas, rural and urban. So this, I think, are the major challenges that we're facing. So capacity building knowledge, and also we want to strengthen our relationship with other networks and uh, with donors and supporters so that we can give continuity to the network, to the efforts that we have as a network. Thank you, Rosa. And well, now we have Idalia. Uh, I think she already has fixed her audio. Why, Idalia, do you think it is important that we keep on working as a network to face these challenges that we have in terms of water and sanitation in Nicaragua? Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. So definitely it is important because in that way we ensure that we incorporate the results of the work that we're doing. Yes, we can hear you. It's okay. You can continue. So, if you can hear me, I think it gives us the opportunity uh, that maybe be between the different uh, member organizations, uh, we can work together. We can work, you know, in advocacy. We can also get more financing, more funding from donors. In terms of RASNIC, I think we have more, uh, we do more advocacy in terms of water sanitation and hygiene, and we do it in different levels of intervention. And with this, we can have more influence in the country. 
Thank you, Idalia. We're, we're, we're hearing, it's okay. Thank you, Idalia. Thank you, Rosa. This is very important work that you do in representing your organizations for water and sanitation. And the work that Rasnik does is very important. So with this, I will uh, go back to you, Julia, to continue with this impact tour. Great, thank you, Kenneth, Rosa, and Idalia. Idalia, sorry about the uh, audio challenges. We know that that's really a part of uh, any virtual event. So thank you for sticking with us. So everyone, uh, thank you for staying on. I hope it was a great insight to learn from Mikrarito and Raznik. As you can tell, there's really a lot of layers to water for people's work. And I think these last two um, visits and interviews did a great job of highlighting that more uh, technical or scale aspect of our work. So as I highlighted, uh, we are going to end our time today with a reflection activity. So I'll go ahead and share these PowerPoints. So, Virtual impact tours um, and in-person impact tours have really been an incredible opportunity to not only connect with water for people's impact, but also to connect with each other. Um, we have found during in-person impact tours, there's a lot of commonalities, to why our partners align with water for people's work, as well as what makes them passionate about the impact they're helping to make. So we have tried to incorporate this both on in-person and virtual impact tours, asking you all, what is your why? What brings you here? What makes you excited about your work and the impact you're making through Water for People? So on this next slide, I've highlighted two questions to get you thinking on your own personal why and what brought you here today. Our goal is to celebrate the impact we've seen over these last few days and reflect on why it is so important for this work to continue, both in Nicaragua and in the other countries where Water for People works. As you all reflect on your own answers, uh, I hope you'll take the opportunity to share some of those reflections with us in the chat. Uh, the last two impact tours, virtual impact tours that we've held, it's been a really special opportunity to connect with you all um, and see why this work is so impactful and how it resonates with each of you. As you're thinking about those answers for yourself, I'm excited to have two speakers here today who are going to share their own why. First is Carlos Lopez. Sustainable Sanitation Advisor with our Water for People Nicaragua team. Second is Vanessa Davison, one of our dedicated board members at Water for People. They do a really great job of connecting not only to Water for People's work, but also speaking to their individual passion and their own why. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Carlos. Carlos, can you hear us? Hola. Buenos días a todos y todas. Gracias. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for participating in this incredible tour. My why? Well, why am I working uh, especially on sanitation? I want to t share with you two main uh, points in my career. I started working uh, for Water for People 11 years ago. Uh, 
Oh, okay. I am the the oldest employee here in uh, Water for People, Nicaragua, and it has been such a transformation. Every year that I've been here, I've been learning new things, been doing new things, and so I got here thinking that we could get all of these districts be with uh, coverage, with water and sanitation coverage. So we started working in La Concordia in a very traditional manner. We would give away latrines and toilets and started working that way at the very beginning. But then we have a, we have a shift. We started realizing that we should respect the desires and the aspirations of the families. So we know that there are some times where we should subsidize. And, you know, because we know about the country situation and we know that there are families that can pay their own improvements, can afford their own improvements. Uh, and we also realize that there are some families that have a little bit more resources and they just need a little bit of help. And everything, all of this is part of a, you know, group and set of actions that we've been doing. And I think the, the positive thing is that we have a good approach here at Water for People and uh, we have a good approach, uh, which is thinking about 2030 about reaching the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. And this motivates me. This is a why for me also, because we're not working just for working. We have a goal. We have a target. And at Water for People, I think we've been learning more. We've been educating ourselves. And we don't really just want to stay in the districts where we are right now. We want to go beyond. We want to do more. And we want to go where the uh, microfinancial institutions are already supporting families with their loans. Uh, the, we have in over 12 departments of the country, so we're talking about 70% of Nicaraguan territory. And they have access now to some sort of financing for sanitation. I know, and I should say that there's always families that definitely need full support, they need subsidies, but they are not all the families. Uh, that means that we are also shifting paradigms, right? We're, we're breaking this uh, minds, older mindsets. Sometimes we would go to some of these families and we saw that they could afford it, but they would still be asking. So we, we needed to change that. In the first few years of my professional work, I was building houses and uh, I, I was working in building houses and water and sanitation, but everything was given away. Everything was a gift. And then, you know, sometimes families, when they don't really sweat it, they don't take care of it. So we also need to work on education, teaching people that they need to maintain everything that they get. They need to maintain it. They need to keep t take care of it. Only then we will make it happen that Nicaragua will have better rates of sanitation, services, water, especially in the rural areas. Without, of course, forgetting, as uh, uh, was mentioned, about the urban areas, because that is also important. We all need to be uh, within this initiative. We should not leave anybody behind. And uh, also a very personal motivation for me is that I grew up uh, by, the, by a river, the Esteli River. I used to go there and fish and swim, and uh, I grew up by the river. Uh, but that river does not exist anymore. There's only a little streak now. I still live by the river, but now we have a very small creek and it's full of rocks. And to me, that was so disappointing and sad. So at some point in my life, I said, I am going to work hard for people to realize what they're doing and that we want water resources to still be sustained in time because I'm afraid that my kids will not have water and so i think this country allows me to give this little bit of mine my life to that and this is what keeps me here and i will keep on working hard as long as god allows me and what i'm also happy about is that there are so many entities 
in, and organizations and entities and, you know, RASNIC and, and individuals that are aware of this now, that we all want to work together, that we all want to work towards the same goal. And I'm very happy working at Water for People and because they're paying me to do something that I like to do. And, you know, my job is my passion. It's I'm a member of a wonderful team. I learn more and uh, it's so interesting, not only within Nicaragua, but also with the other countries where Water for People work. And we learn a lot. We work together and we know that we will make it happen, that Nicaragua will thrive and will be better. And then to wrap up, I always think that we need to take care of each and every single dollar that we get from our supporters. Because, of course, the donors, they don't get it for free. It's an effort that they're making to share their resources with us. And so we need to make sure that every single dollar that is given and that we invest we sustain it and we use it efficiently so that we do not, uh, you know, make the same mistakes that we did in the past. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. It is such a pleasure and a, a privilege to have team members like you working on our teams across the globe. So thank you. So the next speaker, as I mentioned, is going to be Vanessa Davison. I'm excited to welcome her and hear her perspective as a Water for People board member, committed champion. She's originally from Nicaragua, so I'll let her share her connection to the Everyone Forever model and why this work resonates with her so much. Over to you, Vanessa. Thank you, Julia. Can you hear me? Awesome. Well, as Julia mentioned, I'm on the board of Water for People and very passionate about the Everyone Forever model. Um, I actually had researched many WASH organizations worldwide, um, and I actually found our model um, has truly a great impact on communities. Um, so I'm not only a donor, but I wanted to do something more by serving on the board. I've been on the board of directors for several years now. Unfortunately, I joined after our trip to Nicaragua um, but I am particularly excited about Nicaragua because I was born in Nicaragua. You can see from my picture, I was born in Leon, Nicaragua. Um, unfortunately, I fled the country uh, when I was six years old in 1979, but I have always felt that deep connection to Nicaragua and the fact that Water for People um, has had great impact on the families, all the way from children to the elderly. Um, you know, Nicaraguans have suffered a lot um, pol politically and after COVID and anything that we do, um, our little contributions can go a long way to create that very lasting foundation for families to get ahead, communities to prosper. Um, and this is a great time to donate because we have that great match. Um, so I, I would be, it, it's my job to get you all to, to donate today. Um, Para el equipo de Water for People en Nicaragua, les doy las and gracias. for the Nicaragua team and Water for People, thank you for your uh, work, for your hard work in improving the families. It is a pleasure to get to know you, even though if it's been only virtually. But in my next trip to Nicaragua, I hope that I have the opportunity to come visit you, to come see you and meet you personally. Thank you very much for your support and your work for the organization. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Vanessa. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our virtual impact tour. Um, and so in closing, I'm going to pass it back to Lisa, Kenneth and the team um, to leave us with a final message. I think I see them all together. So excited to hear from them. Hola, buenas tardes. Bueno, ya estamos acá. Hello, we're here. We're wrapping up now. This is the office in Jinotega in Nicaragua. We're here with the whole Water for People team in Nicaragua. We would like to thank you, everybody, for being here these three days. And mainly thank you, our team in Denver, Julia, the whole team. And also thank all 
the donors, the supporters for your generosity and also thank the Nicaragua team. You know, you make it possible, not only the virtual tour, but all the work that we've done is thanks to this team that is standing behind me. For me, the most important, uh, well, two things. One is the people that we work for and also the fact that Water for People is made up by its people, people here and over there and connected and in every single one of the nine countries we make up water for people so thank you very much and we really hope that we have more opportunities to share work with you and the work that we do in every country so from Jinotega Nicaragua thank you very much and thank you greetings from Nicaragua and bye thank you Lisa so great to see the whole team together um, and just really grateful for all of their participation and support throughout this event. So as Vanessa shared, we do have the generous match from our corporate partner, Brentag, um, just to continue and really accelerate the work and progress we're seeing in Nicaragua. So we hope that you'll take the opportunity to donate yourself, share it with others in your network, folks who might be interested, excited to double their impact. But with that, again, I will just echo Lisa's gratitude. Thank you for joining us this week. Uh, we know it is not quite the same experience as getting to travel to a country like Nicaragua in person, but we hope that you've had the opportunity to get to know our staff, our work, and hopefully more about how you can get involved and champion water for people. So thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your day and week. And thank you to everyone in the background and the Water for People global team, our interpreters. You all make this possible. Thank you.